Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Conestep and this is going to be part 15 of my early campaign where I am playing as the Almahads. And to my north I have a German Crusade sitting right on my borders here in Toulouse, along with a good healthy five stacks of Frenchmen who I am not at war with, but you know, they are just kind of sitting there. And the French are not at war with the Germans, so that is uh, something to keep in mind. In addition to that, there's also the Italians that I'm still kind of at war with as well because, you know, I took Portugal off of them. And I destroyed their entire navy, although, oh, okay, I, I did destroy their entire navy, but it looks like they have a boat in the water now. So let's take care of that. I do want, what I want is I want to have just two boats sitting in any sea province that is bordering a, an Italian land province so that if they do build another boat I can just destroy it right away. Because yeah, I, I would like to get an alliance with them, I, I mean a you know, ceasefire at least. But for the time being they're kind of just being little poopy pants and they're not going to take a ceasefire and you know what, I mean I can keep trying but let me destroy this boat first and then I'll try to talk to you again. For now though, in addition to that, as if, as if that wasn't enough, you know, war with the Germans and the Italians, the Egyptians also attacked me in the last turn. So I was able to beat, beat them back and I was able to secure Cyrenasia for the time being. I did kill their king, so they have a new king and I would like to talk to him. I would like to send an emissary. You, you there, go, go talk to the Egyptians. See if you can't get them to see reason. In addition to all of that, my treasury or my income is negative 761 florins per year. So with all, all that being said, you might be, you might think that things are really bad for me right now. Well, I don't feel too bad about it, honestly. There's this one German boat that's really screwing up my trade. And what I need to do to fix that, for one thing, is kill the boat. But secondly, I can't have it be this way where one boat really messes things up for me. And the way for me to fix this is to have one of my deep sea boats, my Baglas, in the North Atlantic. Because that's the nice thing that these deep sea regions allow me to do, is they allow me to go around blocked coastal areas, right? So right now the Christians are only going to have access to these coastal boats. Well, I should be able to go around that. I really should. So, you know, and I, and I can. I have the technology. I have the boats that will allow me to do that. Do I have any built right now? I do have a Bagla right here, so... Let's send you up to the Atlantic and then send this guy up to the North Atlantic. And that right there should honestly fix it. Because that's going to connect me up to these territories here. Obviously, I still won't be able to uh, trade with the English Channel. But once I destroy that German boat there, I should be able to. And then, yeah, same thing down here at the Adriatic. Once I destroy that Italian boat, then I can trade with those, you know, four or, prov or four provinces right there. So... That's looking pretty good, but it does go a long way to show, you know, how it e easy it is to disrupt naval trade. You know, all it takes is a boat here and a boat there and bam, it's just, it's all gone. It's all gone. But you know what, that's okay. Like I said, I think that this will be solved just, just with this boat right here. But then once I kill this German boat, that will help very, very much. Now, as far as the Egyptians are concerned, I, I think, I mean, I dealt them a pretty decent blow. They might come in and attack again, but I believe, I, I, I don't know, I think I'm going to be okay. I do have this guy here, his unit, his Gulam bodyguard unit got pretty damaged. I'm going to send him back to Cordoba so I can get his unit retrained. Now I do happen to have, let's see, I don't want to send you because you have, you have zero loyalty. This is one of my, my old sons, now kind of a, a long lost uncle. And I, I want to keep him right next to my king because he has zero loyalty. I want to send someone else though, maybe Prince Ibrahim because your loyalty is pretty decent. Only two command stars though. What about, is there someone else? Ibn Mardanish is a tempting option because he's a four star general. But I don't really want, he's in a militia sergeant's unit. And I feel like what I really need is a unit of Gulam bodyguards to send down there. Prince Muhammad is a good idea as well. He's my eldest son, so he will become, you know, my next king. And I do like him because, you know, five vacuum is pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm gonna send my my second eldest instead. Yeah, only two command stars, but still. 
Gulen bodyguards are still, you know, it's what I need, basically. I'm basically sending them down there for his unit, not so much for, for him. Because once I get this guy and his unit refit, refit and ready to go, Ismail El Mutamid, he's going to go right back in and be the new, you know, the general of this, this uh, province's armies. So that's what's going to be happening going forward here. I can also use this opportunity to to retrain a few of these units as well. And since this is going to take a couple of turns to send these guys back to these provinces and uh, bring in more units, I can simply bring in, because I was training in a bunch of units to get ready for the, you know, the northern potential war, like the, with the crusade and everything. But I can send this wave of guys just straight back to Cyrenasia so that they can hold the line while I'm retraining these other units. While this is all happening, this German army, this German crusade, is simply just going to wither away here because they've deemed me too powerful to attack. So, they, yeah, they're just... They're not doing too well. What are they down to? 2018. It doesn't... Man, that doesn't... That does not seem right. I'm not going to do the math, but that does not seem right. In any case, though, I feel like I can finally move these soldiers out of Portugal, and they should be fine now. Portugal's doing okay? Yeah, you're doing okay. I'm still training just a, a, just a complete mountain army of peasants here in Portugal just to kind of keep them happy. Because like I was saying before, Portugal is one of those provinces that does remain unhappy for a very long time. And I just want to deal with any sort of population, you know, loyalty revolts over there. So I can send these soldiers back up to the front. Oh, it looks like I can't do it right now. Oh yeah, I don't have a port yet in Portugal. Yeah. Three turns away. I'm almost there. I'm working on it. Now, for now, I, I don't really want to... I will spend money on retraining soldiers, but I don't really want to put in any new buildings until I get my economy fixed. Losing 761 florins uh, isn't... It doesn't feel great, even though I, you know, I feel like it will get solved very quickly here. It still is not a great feeling, so... I'm gonna keep everything as is for now. Yeah, the Turks and the Egyptians are doing so well. I'm so proud of you guys. Oh yeah, and the, the French the French Crusade. Oh dear. That's not gonna go well for them. They are not gonna make it. No, they are not. Alright, well let's drop a save. And let's end this turn. The Tur the Turks are retreating from the French Crusade right after I said that. Guys, you're making me look bad. Um, okay, interesting. Let's see, it looks, looks like I, I did lose a ship in the English Channel. God damn. Oh, that's annoying because I had I had two ships in this English Channel, yeah. And in this case, I did win the battle in the Adriatic. Okay, that's good. One of my battles, I feel like was I just looking at him, Muhammad Al Mutamid? Did, I, I can't remember if he. Uh, Spear makers completed in Lyon. Town watch is finished in Algeria. And Abdullah Ibn Mamun, and so that's perversion. Most loyal. Ooh, plus three loyalty and plus one dread. Okay, nice. And approachable manner, plus one acumen, plus ten happiness. All right. That's fine. I wanted to see, though. It's Okay, so it's not these guys. My five-star generals are still, still alive. They're still kicking. Nice. That's what I'd like to see. Unfortunately, though, yeah, losing a ship up here, That's that sucks. That does suck. Ooh, they have two now. Oh, no. Oh, man. Okay, so that's... uh. Let's send you guys, let's see, I want to keep at least two boats down here to the Bay of Biscay in case they circumvent me and, you know, come down this way. But I need to send these boats up here and try to finish this guy off. Now if this boat does come down here, I can 2v1 him. If he runs away to the Brit North Sea, that's going to be tough. I should probably send... This is what I should do. Send him to the North Sea so I can try to 2v1 him. And then I may as well send this guy back to just shorten our trade lines. So we are trading. No, we're not. Yeah, right, right. That, duh. Yeah, we need to get this figured out. We really do. We need to kill these two German boats because that's uh, that's becoming a bit of a nuisance. How's the trade going? So now we're down to just negative 56. But still, the fact that there's just two German boats kind of messing everything up for me is pretty... Pretty crazy, for sure, because, you know, I own the seas. Like, you'd think that that shouldn't be an issue, but it really is. It really is. And I do, the thing is, I am paying, a, you know, a lot of upkeep. I do have a lot of armies right now. So there is that. That is another thing. I have a lot of boats as well. 
So that is kind of hindering me in those ways. But overall, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. There's not too many ways to increase my income based on the territories that I already have, other than just keep on building up the next tier of merchant buildings, which I totally can do. It's going to require quite a big investment, though, because the next tier of merchant buildings is going to require a... Well, Portugal is a bad example because I'm on, only on tier one right there. But, for example, in Lyon, I'd need to build a castle before I can build that tier three trade building. And, yeah, that's 2,000 florins in 12 years just for a castle. You know, it's, long, it's a long time, so... Maybe I can put in a few more uh, farm upgrades just to kind of give me a little little short-term boost. And what's this? I did find the German chapter house right here in Austria. Okay, well, now I know where it is. And you know what? Gosh. It wouldn't be that hard for me to just take Austria and destroy that chapter house. I mean, I would want to go, so, you know, ironically enough, I'd be going through Italian territory and, you know, messing up one of their territories on my way to Austria. I would not start a war with the Hungarians. That seems kind of foolish. Just because, you know, why start another war? But, yeah, that's, gosh, that's not the worst idea. Taking, what is this province? Venice, and then... Just burning their stuff, killing a lot of their soldiers, and then taking Austria so that I can destroy their chapter house, and then, you know, ending their crusade. Ooh, holy moly. Oh my god, they just got a lot a lot of men. Okay, what's going what's going on here? I'm I'm reading something wrong. Because I thought it said like two thousand guys before, and why is the flag so full? I'm so I'm so confused. The flag was less full before but there's more soldiers in it. And now... Am, am I reading? I don't know. <laughs> oh, did, did, did they just really pillage the French armies? They don't seem that pillaged. A little bit, I suppose. Interesting. Well, it was 2000 and now it's down to 1800. So they're, they're, they are losing men. Yes, the German crusade is losing men. It, it does seem like it's going to fail on its own. It really does seem that, seem that way, but this is totally an option. Maybe maybe for later, like maybe for their next crusade. Is go, go through here, mess up the Italians, and then go mess up the, the Austrians. The only reason why I'm not feeling too adventurous right now is really just because I, I do really want to just focus internally on my own stuff. I would really like to just build up my own economy, my own infrastructure, my own, you know, my army infrastructure and get get some nice armies going. That's really what I, what I want to focus on right now. I don't really feel like, you know, going, going for this. This seems more like a mid-game type of play. And this is still relatively in the early game. I know it feels long, but that's a, it's, a, it's a long game. So that doesn't, yeah, it just, that feels a little bit too crazy for me because what would this take? You know, I, I can send four stacks and get the job done? Probably, yeah. You know, even though there's, there's four stacks from the Italians, still, my four stacks would probably beat their four stacks because I'm seeing a lot of peasants, you know? And, um... But, you know, where, where does that four stacks come from? Right, right here, I feel like I have what I need to hold back the French and the Germans. And right here, same thing. I feel like this is necessary. So, I, I don't feel like I'm ready for that. I don't, you know, clearly I don't have four stacks here. I don't have them sitting around. No one's kind of laying around doing nothing here. Everyone's kind of doing something. So I, yeah, it, you know, once I can build up my, my, you know, get my trade going back again, build up a treasury would be nice. You know, it'd be really nice to get a good, strong treasury and a good income going before I start making these bold moves into, you know, these bold naval invasions where I possibly could lose four stacks, you know? That's a pretty uh, pretty bold thing to happen. Now, this this is very interesting. The the fact that the French took, I mean, I guess the yeah the Turks I guess didn't have much. The crusade flags really are misleading. So that's yeah. What the heck is going on? So this is two thousand two hundred men, but the flag is that low. 
And then over here, the German crusade, the flag is like almost full, but that's 1,700 men. So does the, <laughs> is, does the banner reflect like the number of units, not necessarily the number of men? Is that what's going on here? It's so weird. I, I don't, I don't understand that. That's uh, kind of, kind of got me lost. <laughs> that's, it's a weird one. That is a weird one. Oh yeah, I can actually start training up ninjas. I think, or not ninjas, but oh man, I'm still stuck in my shogun, my shogun mind. But I can start getting assassins going. So let's get an assassin going, so I can try to kill these bishops hanging out in Aragon. Just because, you know, they belong to the French and I don't want the French spying on Aragon, you know? Just makes me feel a little bit weird. So, yeah, let's get that going. Also, because, you know, of this, <laughs> the fact that Aragon's 64% Christian and, you know, I'm trying to get this whole Muslim thing going on here. So, yeah, let's get some assassins up there and to f I can try to fix that. And I can start training my, my r religious agents, my imams. Somewhere, I think. Are they, Im are they imam imams or alams? Alams. And then I believe imams are my second tier religious agent. That must be what it is. It is tempting. I, I probably could do that. Yeah, get some alams going in Cyrenasia. And alam is a learned scholastic figure in the Islamic faith and his presence in a province does much to boost the faith, faith of Muslims. Yeah, I think so. I so <laughs> for those of you who've seen my watch my Shogun content, you will know that I do really love using agents. I look, I, I don't think it's for, for me. It doesn't break the immersion at all. I really do feel like, for example, um, that empires would have a counterintelligence network going on through their entire empire. So you know, in Shogun, I really liked using Shinobi to keep my people happy. And I will be doing the same thing with spies in this game as well. I like using ninjas and assassins, assassins to keep agents out of my territories. And I like using religious figures to do a lot of my spying, quite frankly, in this game especially, because I can't really spend send spies and assassins willy-nilly throughout enemy territory, because a lot of times they will get picked off by enemy border forts and enemy counter spies, you know, like their own spies and their own assassins. So the best way that I find to get vision on these central provinces is by sending religious agents, whether it's bishops or alums or imams or even uh, inquisitors into these central regions here in Europe and also this uh, Western Asia sort of area here. And uh, yeah, that's that's the really great way to spy because in this case, I love that my ships allow me to spy on all of these coastal regions. And in Shogun, that would allow me to spy on pretty much anything if that were the case, if, if boats existed in Shogun, because most of the provinces in Shogun do border the water. In this case, though, I do feel really blind to see what's happening, you know, in all of this area here. And that's kind of a big deal when it comes to specifically this area, right? Because this is closer to me and what happens here matters more. <laughs> so I would like to get some religious agents going so that I can start for one thing, yeah, raising back my the level of uh, Islam faith here in Aragon and probably these, probably these other provinces as well that I had to take off the Spanish and the Aragonese, but as well as to, you know, spy on these other, these other nations, including these nations that do have my naval spying blocked because they have their own boats in these provinces. So that's, uh, that's something that I'm going to be working towards. That's again, that <laughs> it takes a long time. I will definitely be, you know, training a lot of religious agents for a very, very long time to eventually spread out over the course of the entire map. But the sooner that I get started on that, the better, because like I said, it's going to take a very, very long time. Now this could work out in my favor in my, fa by, by in my favor, I just mean my preference because here's what I want. As I was saying before, I think in the last episode, if I could have the perfect world for me is a Turkish empire that stretches up alongside the Egyptian empire, but then they expand this way, you know, kind of like into Polish territory, the Novgorods and all that. Whereas in this case, the Egyptians, they're the ones that take the old Byzantine empire down and face off against the, you know, whatever comes this way, 
Crusades, the Hungarians, the Poles, whatever it is. I know it's really anti-historical because, of course, it was the Turks that did all this. But in this case, it just makes more sense because if the Egyptians are fighting off against, you know, things coming from the West, then maybe they'll be less interested in me, for example. And then I can get that long-coveted alliance with the Egyptians and, frankly, the Turks as well. Because, yeah, I want, I want us all to do well. I want all of us to do well. The Egyptians, the Turks... And myself. So this little pointless border squabble is dumb because, guys, trust me, you don't want Cyrenasia. <laughs> I'm making 95 florins a year off of this place, and that's with a economic upgrade. Guys, you don't want this. Trust me. You have incredible trade resources in Egypt, and then I believe, Pal nope, not Palestine. Tripoli, though, trade in, in, you know, trade resources. Antioch, look at that. You have gems, you have spices, you have silk. Come on. Build some boats. Get that trade going. Don't focus on me at all. <laughs> at all. So, the way that the French could really help me out in this regard is, sure, take the Turks out of Constantinople and take them out of Nicaea. And then have them bump heads against the Egyptian Empire, which hopefully will push them back and retake these provinces. That would be the perfect little medieval European world for me. Let's see if that uh, let's see if that you know happens. And I wouldn't mind at some point, you know, sending the navy to try to like help them out. You know, I wouldn't mind at some point sending a naval invasion to take territories ahead of their forces to try to help them out. You know, I really wouldn't mind taking Bulgaria and then just raising everything to the ground, killing these armies, and then leaving and then letting whatever Muslim country is uh, left to come sweep in behind me. That would be totally fine. I'm not, as I was saying, I'm not really ready yet for a naval inv invasion, but these are all things that I wouldn't mind doing at some point. Now, I think I can t attack. No, I just brought these guys into this province, so I can't attack that boat just yet. That's going to have to happen next turn. Now, let's continue to move my emissary down so that you can eventually talk to the Egyptian King and see if we can get that ceasefire. And without further ado, let's drop a save and let's end this turn. Oh my oh my, that French crusade is just kind of trucking along, isn't it? Let's see, so they, they killed another one of my boats. God damn. This freaking inferior German Navy is just causing havoc on my shipping lines. How ahistorical can it get? Now the, um, yes, in this case I did kill this bow. Okay. That is good. And, uh, yes, the Sicilians are happy. Good for them. Siege Engineer's Workshop is complete. I Is that the first one? I think that's the second one. And then, yes, the uh, Italians do not want my ceasefire. All right. Well, that sucks. My king is now a great builder, so he's given plus ten happiness to all the provinces and plus one loyalty to all generals. Good stuff. Good stuff, yeah. Now, let's... Okay, so if you're not going to be friends with me, just kind of hang out here until you change your mind. Hopefully someone goes to war with the Italians, and then the Italians are like, Oh, no, I need friends. Yeah, I thought so. Now, let's go down here and talk to this guy. And, yes, is this, a, a like, a new new king? I thought... Okay, okay no, this is Sultan Nazir the First, 21. Yeah, four stars, not bad. Great warrior, so plus five health. And then, yeah, so negative ten happiness. Interesting, so... I wonder if there would is a chance like there would be a rebellion in Egypt. Looks like people are pretty happy here. Yep, pretty high loyalty every all all around. Now, did the Oh wow, did the did the French Crusade just die? <laughs> did, I think it's gone. The French Crusade just died, didn't it? Oh wow, that's <laughs> Yeah, because it, it attacked Trebizond. Awesome, sweet. Well, my, I mean, my perfect world did not happen because, they, they, you know, they ended up leaving Constantinople before they fully took the province off of the Turks. But you know what? That's, you know, that's, that's totally fine. I was just, that was just a pipe dream of mine. Maybe we can get that to happen further down the road. If the Egyptians just built a freaking navy and, you know, expanded out this way and, like, attacked... Naples or some shit, the Italians, that'd be great. You know, that's totally fine. 
the AI in this game does know how to use its navies, so it's possible. So I don't know what's going on with Egypt and not building boats. And the crusade is down to 1,500 men, so it is definitely losing men. Yep, yeah. It's, uh, that's not going to go well for them. Now, the German boat, though, yeah, it's up here. And yeah, 1v1, I don't, I don't like that. So let's send over. Do I need to send three? I, I don't. Let's send... Let's keep you here. And then send you two up here so that we can try to 3v1 this guy. And then if he goes back this way, I can, you know, 2v1 him. And if he goes up this way, I can kind of just chase him into a corner and take care of him that way. So that should be fine. I don't believe I'm still... Yeah, if I had... If I had someone here, I'd be able to trade, but I but I don't, so. But that does still go to show how useful the North Atlantic, you know, shipping lane is. That would be, you know, nice for me to have someone in the Norwegian Sea. Because then the Germans can't block me by having someone here in, in the North Sea, is it? Yeah. Everywhere else is looking pretty gosh darn good, though. Ooh, I need a boat here in the Sea of Mamara. Ooh, that's a big mistake. Yeah, that's a big mistake because that means I'm not making money off of this. Just the one, the one port. That's it. The entire Black Sea has one port. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Well, I need to fix that really quickly. Let's uh, get you over and just scooch, scooch on over, and that should uh, make me some more money. Speaking of which, how are we doing? Making 197. So we're in the green now. That is. That's gonna feel good. That does feel good. All right. Let's move. I want, like I was saying before, I want to have at least two ships in some of these provinces that border, you know, the Italians. So this is going to make me feel a little bit better up here. Yeah. And I do have an assassin now. All right. Go, go, assassin. Let's send you into Aragon. And we have like a million French people to kill here. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's four bishops and an emissary. Kill all of them. Let's see if you can. Assassin. Ishaq El Qasim, go man, you can do this, you got this. And the French are no longer at war with the English, what? Wow, I mean, that's interesting considering that the French own parts of England, so, huh, fascinating. So the English get a little bit of respite here, that's good. I mean, so the French are technically at war with the, you know, the Turks and the Egyptians, so... Yeah, I'm curious though, because the crusade's gone, and you'd think, without any land borders, you'd think that the war would, you know, there'd be an automatic ceasefire, correct? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm still, I'm obviously pretty confused about the whole automatic ceasefire thing in this game. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit on the wishy-washy side, as far as I can tell. But you know, that's probably just because I don't understand it fully. I'm sure it makes perfect sense. I am going to continue to be stingy for now, but with this boat in the Sea of Mamara and with this port finishing in Portugal in this turn, and with potentially being able to remove this German boat from the, what is this, is this the North, North Sea? I can't, I can't tell. Um, but yeah, with those three things in order, I, I, my income could very well jump in this, uh, at the, in this end turn. So, if that's the case, then I can go back to spending money again, which is going to feel nice. Well, maybe not right away. Maybe maybe let my treasury build up just a little bit, and then I can, you know, start building. I, honestly, I feel like castles is, what the, you know, what I need to do. Build castles in the regions that have trade coming from them so that I can build my third tier trade uh, trade income buildings, like my merchants and stuff. So let's end this turn and see how much money I'm making. Ah, there we go. So the enemy ship is sunk. The Germans, the German fleet, the German fleet menace is now over. The King of Hungary has died, but there is another one. And the Turkish Sultan has also died, but there is an heir to take over as well. Tavern is complete in Valencia, so I can train assassins there. And port is complete in uh, Portugal, and the mosque is finished in Morocco. And a spear maker's finished in Algeria because I do want to be able to train Nubian spearmen in more than just one place. Right now I'm just training them in Morocco and that does not feel good. It feels very restrictive, honestly. And yeah, the Egyptians don't want to see us fire. That's that's really too bad. My wife has given birth to a son, so I have will have another one 
in 16 years. And what do we got? We have a Thinker, plus two Acumen, um, Secret Pride, negative one command, plus three Valor, Builder, plus in happiness. And this is interesting as well, because the Builder traits apply to not just the King, but also to the Governors as well. So you basically get like extra happiness by just building a bunch of buildings as well, which is, you know, pretty cool. So let's see, anything, yeah, the Germans, the Germans are just deteriorating their crusade, their poor, poor crusade. Yeah, they're like, come with us, men. We are going to sack. What was our goal, anyway? What was it? Morocco? Cordoba? Cordoba. Yeah, we're going to sack Cordoba, the greatest city in the world. And nah, 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 you're not. You're stuck in Toulouse. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. And, yeah, let's see. I feel like, um, let's check out that income. 1300 not bad. That's, uh, that's okay. Is that including having this now? Oh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, okay, let's move this over. Let's do that. And let's send you here. Let's leave two boats here so that if the Germans do, it's going to be in this province, right? The North Sea. So if it, yeah, right? If the German, if the Germans make another boat, it's going to be here. And then I can just 2v1 them and take them out. Yeah, that's, uh, that seems pretty good because they can't, it's somewhere else, right? There's nowhere else they can put boats in the water. It's a province, but they don't have that, sh that thing, that ship is like, I'm never going to remember this. Dockyard. Uh, they don't have a dockyard in province. And if they did, I, I can 2v1 them there as well, so... I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. And just like that, the French are back to not being at war with anyone. See, that's what I don't understand. Why, like, why am I at war with the Italians? Is it because I have boats bordering their territories? Okay, so... Uh, I don't want to do this because this is going to hurt my income. Well... Maybe it won't hurt hurt my income because I do have boats going everywhere So it's not gonna break the chain because all of the provinces that are trading with me all of the regions all the factions that are trading with me I still will be able to trade with their ports just because I have you know boats in every other province, so How about this for an experiment? I move these guys out here and then move you out of there so that I'm not gonna be bordering Sardinia, Corsica, Tuscany, Genoa. That should be fine. And then same thing here. Let's take you out of the Adriatic. Ooh, this one's going to hurt because, yeah, there's a couple ports here. The Papal States and the Hungarians I'm, I would be trading with. A and the Sicilians as well. But if I can get an automatic ceasefire by leaving these territories, that would be nice. Because right now they're not taking my ceasefire that's being offered by my emissary. But I'm not bordering their territories. And they don't have any boats in their freaking water. So let's see if this is the case. This should do it. I mean, goddamn, the, the French got a you know, automatic ceasefire with the Turks and the Egyptians by not attacking them and by not sharing the ocean on any of their you know provinces or whatever. So yeah, let's let's see if that's the case. Let's see if I'm right about this. Fingers crossed, eh? I'm gonna be trying to attack one of their bishops here with their with my assassin. And I'm going to be sending my, my alums out to Portugal and um, Aragon, actually, because there's a ton of Christians here in Portugal. So that explains why Portugal is so hard to wrangle, I guess, because they're, they're very Christian. So this hopefully can help out over time by having an alum there and Aragon as well. The rest of my provinces are pretty good on the whole Muslim thing. You know, a lot of 100%s here, 100%. As we get into here, into El Andalus, or Spain, it gets a little bit less, 98, 97, 73% here in Valencia, and then, yeah, 38 in Aragon, that's a, that's a bad one. But then we have, like, Navarre, 82% for some reason. Like, I, like why? I mean, oh, I do have a mosque. Yeah, that's right, I have a mosque in Navarre. That explains it. And then, yeah, Castile, but there's no mo there's no mosque in Castile, but it's, I'm at 82%, so, yeah, it's interesting. 77 in Leon's not bad as well. So I'm going to just leave these alums here in Portugal and Aragon for now, and then I'm going to start sending them out into these regions so I can get some eyes on what's going on out here. There we go. My assassin got the job done. He killed one of those bishops. Well, let's get on. Let's get another one, eh? And what? Oh, come on. Who's, who's killing me now? So someone must have just declared war on me because I'm not at war with any of these factions. Don't tell me it was the French. Oh, come on. So I, yeah, I lost, lost a ship in the English Channel. God damn. 
So I did, it must have been the French. Was it the Sicilians? I don't know. I did win the battle here in the Bay of Biscay. And then same thing on the Spanish coast. So it had to win the French, right? It's the French. And then, yeah, won the battle here in the Gulf of Cadiz. Both of them. I killed both of the ships. Wow, okay. And then, yeah, I also won in the Straits of... Well, okay, so they, they lost a lot. Wow. Wait, what? The, the Turks? Are the Turks fighting me now, too? What's going on? What just happened? Just, oh my god, a bunch of... What? Did just like four kings or five kings die at the same time? Okay. Wow. So now we got the compass, a, re a reliable guide that can point the way to the north in all weathers and at night is a blessing to sailors. They need not hug the coast, praying that the weather will be kind to them. Now in larger ships, they can sail with confidence across the ocean. Now, the nice thing about being in the Muslim faction is that I've had access to somehow I can sail the open seas without a compass, I guess. So I've had baglas that can uh, sail in the deep ocean waters for a while. And now the Catholics can finally start doing that. So good for them. Prince Muhammad, fast talker, my kind of guy. He is now a uh, plus two acumen, I like it. And yeah, let's see, Nazar Ibn Inan, strange, minus one morale, okay, nothing too bad. Um, yeah, nothing else too important there. Okay, who, who am I at war with? I'm afraid to look, every, oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> a lot. I'm aboard the French and the Turks now. <laughs> and the Egyptians. God damn, so much for Muslim Brotherhood. Fuck. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so the Turks, I mean, I didn't even lose anything to, to the Turks. They just attacked one of my boats and then I sunk them. Oh dear. Why? Like, why would they do that? Why? I don't even want to look. I'm afraid. Okay, I'm still in the green, okay. <laughs> that's crazy. How how am I in the green? That's that's insane. Okay. Huh. So God, this is <laughs> oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? The fact that they're French are not at war with anyone except me is is pretty I mean that's pretty crazy. That really is crazy. I feel like there should be a lot more war going on in Central Europe or Western Europe. There should be a lot more German versus Italian versus French versus English action and less, you know, focusing on me or, right? Yeah, less focusing on me. But, the, you know, still, the fact that I'm Muslim and they're Christian at least makes sense in that way. But the Turks? Oh, come on, et tu brute? I mean, fuck, man. We, we were homies. God damn. I've been rooting for you. It's on record. I've been rooting for you guys, both of you, this whole goddamn time. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You know, it's, it's funny because... I, you know, I talk about how, you know, in this game, I like to play a little bit more politically because I can use the glorious achievements points in this game, whereas in Shogun, you just have to kill everyone because that's kind of the goal of the game, as a, as well as the fact that having allies in Shogun isn't just not really much of a point. You do get a 250 Koku per, uh, you know, year bonus or, you know, whatever income, but like it's not, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But in this game, it's nice that you can actually play, you know, the Glorious Achievements points, and you can play a little bit politically, and using trade, and all that stuff. But man, this is insane. Like, I don't think I've seen it this bad with just getting dogpiled by the AI, so... And I'm not even doing anything. I'm just hanging out, trying to trade and make people rich. Come on. That's all I really want right now, so... I'm going to have to consider actually punishing these factions and trying to make them capitulate just so that I can go back to trading with them. And what I mean by that is sending my armies from Cyrenasia, punishing these forces in Egypt, really, really, you know, doing them the dirty and trying to get them to capitulate so that I can trade with them again. Now, would I do, would I dare do that with the French? I mean, 
I feel pretty gosh darn confident with taking out these armies here in Equitain and Toulouse. I really do. But would that be enough to make France capitulate? You know, they own a pretty decent sized empire at this point. And just attacking into the, this part of, you know, Europe... I don't see that being a great idea. I see that, you know, even if I simply call it right here, right? Say I take these two provinces and don't go any further. Still, I'm opening myself up to an attack from a land force from the Germans. And I don't, I mean, I know I'm already at war with the Germans, so that's not, you know, bringing a new enemy. I get it, but I don't, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to get into this. <laughs> You know, so it's a tough call. It really is a tough call. And at the same time, though, well, it is nice that I'm in the green. The fact is, it's not, this isn't enough money. This isn't a big enough income to really grow my empire off of. But then again, I could just put my boats back, right? So clearly this did not work out with getting an automatic ceasefire with the Italians. For some reason. I'm still at war with them. And I don't know why. But I could, um, simply bring these boats back to these territories. Where's the other boats? I think I had some boats here. Yeah, yeah. You guys can simply come back. Oh, not you. You can come back to this sea, and you guys can come back here. And that's still going to open up a couple more trade ports, right? We'll go back to trading with Naples, we'll go back to trading with a couple other places. Nothing up here, I suppose, but whatever. I can keep my boats in here to, you know, create a blockade for them, I guess. And I can kill the French fleet and focus on trading up here, right? With, with the Novgorods and the Danes. And I don't think I am right now. I think this is blocked in some way. No, I am. I am trading with them. Yeah, see, that's the nice thing about having these deep sea boats is that I can circumnavigate these regions where I was defeated or where I am blockaded and I can actually trade up into here, which is really, really good for me. So... What would I get by killing French boats? Here, nothing, because the only one I could trade with is France. Here, again, it would be nothing, because it's all just French ports. Now, on this side, let's see, is there any British ports? No, they, the British don't have any ports. The French, the French took them all. Oh, maybe, maybe Wales? No, I think the French have Wales. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. So I guess I really wouldn't be getting any money by opening up these, this, um, you know, these regions. Obviously, I still want to do this by, you know, I still want to take take the war to the ocean, obviously, and kill the French fleet. So, yeah, that that is what I'm going to do. So let's take these guys and kill this French fleet. And let's get moving up with more boats. I guess you... Hmm, do I want to move you two? I think I do. Let's start moving boats down. Or down and around up to the North North Ocean here. I have to talk to these people. I have to try to talk some sense into them. So let's get some more emissaries on the field, like a few more. Because I'm already talking to the Italians and the Egyptians trying to say, Hey, no, stop fighting me. And now I'm going to send some more off to the French, the Germans, and the Turks. Let's get three more emissaries. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And if I can't fix my economy through my trade, which is the big expensive option, the more uh, humble, modest option is to simply build more farmlands, which is totally a thing that I should be doing. So Valencia, let's go. I don't even have a single farm upgrade here in Valencia. And that is a mistake because Valencia is making, um, what are they making off farm income? 504. So they definitely deserve at least one upgrade here. And then after that, I can make a farm upgrade here in Castile because they have only one upgrade and they're making 731 
uh, Florins off of off of one upgrade. So they definitely deserve another one. I'm going to wait on that right now because I do only have 3,000 Florins in the treasury. So I don't want to spend it all in one blow. I, I just want to kind of hang on to my... Hang on to what do I got here. So I will do that probably once this farm upgrade is finished here in Valencia. And I will do that slowly, province by province, working on my farming that way. Yeah, that, that seems like a... That seems like a pretty good idea. And hopefully we can get some freaking, you know, ceasefires here because I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, like I was saying before, sure, like attacking is one way to kind of get them to capitulate and say, hey, no, no more war. But, you know, the other way is maybe just kind of hoping that they, <laughs> I don't know if they will ever kind of decide on their own. They, I think the AI does need to be basically in other wars for them to say no more war to you. Like, right? They need to be in a tough spot to really choose to, to not be in a war. But we will, I mean, we can we can hope that so eventually something in, in this part of Europe has to break down, right? Something has to happen. There needs to be a rebellion. The English have to push back and try to take back their ter ter territory from France. Something like that needs to be happening here at some point. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that is the case. So let's drop it in the save. Let's go through at least one more turn for this episode before we move on here. Oh, okay. Oh, well, the French aren't messing around. They are going for Aragon now, and this is going to be quite the battle. I was able to kill the French bishop, and here, here we go. I mean, I do not think this is going to go well for them. They do have a four-star general, but he is a unit of Hoblars, which is a unit of Light Cav. They do have a armor upgrade, so I, I don't think I don't know if I've mentioned this yet, but the armor there actually is four armor upgrades in this game, as opposed to the three in Shogun. Where in, in Shogun we have the bronze, silver, and gold. In this game, there's the black, bronze, silver, and gold. So this is the first tier armor upgrade, and then down here we have a second tier armor upgrade on a ballista unit of all things, which is kind of strange. So they do have a four star Hoblar general with an armor upgrade. Hobblers aren't great units, but they're, you know, they're decent, like Cav. Other than that, though, what do we got? We got some tier two spearmen right here in the feudal sergeants, some tier one spearmen here, some urban militia, you know, tier one armor piercing unit, a couple of militia sergeants, which is the tier two militia, uh, armor piercing units, four archers, and then four ballista and one catapult. And this is a huge, huge mistake by sending these four useless units to come attack me. They're just gonna get completely dunked on. And this army is gonna be destroyed. I, I don't even have to look at what I'm gonna be doing, which I, I am, I'm totally gonna form my army the way I want it to be. But yeah, I, this, this is gonna get destroyed. And what's gonna come on next? Peasants. Their first units on are gonna be peasants, urban militia, more like have some damaged spearmen, which I believe that's probably because of the German crusade that sucked up these units. And then, yeah, archers, archers, mounted sergeants, which is another light cav unit, light, medium light cav. They have a pretty good charge, honestly. And then what do we got? More archers, 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 some, a minute, a, gosh, a, a unit of feudal men at arms with only three men in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh dear yeah order of foot soldiers so this is a damage so this is a unit that they had from their crusade yeah interesting it's, it's a good unit but there's only 26 of them so yeah they're not gonna do much anything else anything for me to be really worried about no nothing okay this is gonna be a massacre I outnumber them and and I have um I have, much, I have a much better army. A much, much better army. So let's get this done. This is what I have in mind to defeat this first wave. So obviously this first wave is very, very weak. And what I want to do against it... So typically I like to bring, for example, six spearmen in my base armies for, for any faction versus any faction. However, in this case, I think that it would be really prudent to go swordsman heavy because... Their first wave, it's all light armor. I mean, they do have some armor upgrades, and my swordsman can struggle against that a little bit. 
But, I mean, swordsmen are designed to tear apart spearmen, even tier two spearmen. You know, militia sergeants, archers. My swordsmen with their three valor, in this case, four valor, yeah. They should be doing pretty good here. So they should tear apart this infantry. And then I want to be bringing four units of Saharan Cav. I do have multiple units of Gulam bodyguards, so I, I could have brought a bunch of those. But considering that there's zero units of Royal Knights in this army here, that seems to be a little bit overkill. I will bring them on as my reinforcements. But in my opening wave, I want four full 40-man units of Light Cav that I can use to chase down these archers, these artillery crews, and this whole army once it breaks. Everyone. All of them. I want this whole wave wiped out if I can. And ultimately... This battle can be a good thing, because remember what I was just talking about concerning trying to maybe attack someone to make them capitulate? Well, this is my freaking opportunity. They came right to me with an army of over 3,000 men that I can potentially kill and potentially make them change their minds when it comes to fighting against me. And if not, then what I can do is by killing so many of their guys, hopefully that's the case, that can potentially weaken them to make them look like a prime or more vulnerable target for other enemies. So in this case, maybe the Germans or the Italians or the English decide, hey, the French are looking weak because the Almohads just messed them up. So that's what I have in mind here. This episode's probably going to go over a little bit long here because at this point I can't save and then load back in once I'm in this battle screen. I know that's confusing because up here it does say save and load. I I've tried this before. I it didn't work. Maybe I did it wrong, but I tried saving here and then kind of quitting the game and then coming back and it, it didn't it didn't bring me back here so it, yeah I, I don't really know you know what's what's the point or if I did that wrong or something but unfortunately once you get to this stage uh, from from what I understand you just have to play it out and it could, can take a long time but you know what I do have time and when it comes to killing French people it's not something I like to rush so let's get on to it Hey, remember before when I said that I really don't like this map because it's uh, kind of uh, boring? <laughs> I changed my mind. I love this map. Look at, the, look at this. Just look at this. This is insane. This hill is insane. They have to climb all the way up here. Oh, this is wonderful. This is so awesome. Okay, let's get my guys grouped up and ready to go here. Probably get back a little bit further on this mountain. It's not even a hill. It's a freaking mountain. But let's get my guys grouped up and ready to go. So my army is going to be a little bit weak in the center, but I think that's okay. I'm going to have my two swordsmen with my archers in the center, and then on either flank I'm also going to have an archer, swordsman, and then two spearmen. So where do I want you guys? Like maybe like this? That looks pretty good. And then say Heron Cav, come way out here. Honestly, you guys can probably just like start start going. Because their only cav unit is their general. That it is one unit of Hoblars. So I should be fine. If he wants to run out against me, I should be able to take him. So we probably shouldn't do that. What I can do is I can get my Saharan Cav all the way around on both sides. They can just clean up these useless, useless artillery crews that are not in range of me at all. The thing that they can do that can be annoying is that once I break this first army and then I start chasing them down this, you know, just down to the end of the map. It's look, look how far that like that's how big these maps are. You can just chase them forever. But yeah, you will be getting shot by artillery while you're doing that. So it is actually kind of nice to clear up the artillery before that happens. Or, or during, you know, you totally can just chase the fleeing army all the way to the artillery and kill it that way. It looks like they they are focusing on my Saharan Cav on this flank, so okay, that wasn't really my intended strategy here, but you know, I guess I'll kind of use my Saharan Cav to sort of lure them back this way. I don't really mind that too much. And yeah, on this side, I can just keep sending my 
stay here and uh, cav down on this side, and they can come around and flank here. Yeah, I guess uh, if they want to follow my Saharan calf up the hill, I, I guess, you know, whatever. Not a big deal. Follow me up, I will lead you guys to your death. Yeah, they were kind of coming around here like they wanted to trap me, and it's like, okay, you're not, you're not going to trap me. I'm, I'm on a horse. I'm on, I'm on horses. <laughs> Over on this side, though, here we go. Send you here, send you here, put you on engage at will. And please, please tell me I'm not going to lose guys to artillery. Come on. Get them down. Get them down. That's one down, two down. Let's go and get number four down. We're working on him. Actually, come finish off these guys here. Yeah, how many was it? Was it? Was it? Was it one, two, three, four, five, five, five units of artillery? What a waste. Currently, the French army is still marching up this hill, but they don't really, they're not forming a battle line, which is kind of strange. And we have some archers that are kind of making a move like they want to defend their artillery. I, I would really recommend against not doing that, because what are you guys going to do? <laughs> like, you're just going to come back here and, you know, what, get one volley of arrows into my, uh, my light cav before I mow you guys down? Oh, oh, I will take this. I will absolutely take this. All right, guys, come in here. Mow down these archers here and here. I don't even know if they're going to be getting one volley in. No, they are not. That is it. They are not going to be having a good day. They should not have left the safety of their army or their relative safety. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't worry, guys. It'll be your turn next. There's no safety on this battlefield if you're a Frenchman. This unit of archers is gone. This unit of militia sergeants doesn't really know what it wants to do with this terrain piece. It's kind of figuring out up and the whole up and down thing. It's kind of, you know, figuring that one out. Now, do I want to waste this time going all the way back there to kill those three ballista crew? Nah, not really. So let's just get my guys back up, probably just up here, I suppose, on this hill. So just so they don't get caught, it looks like the militia sergeants have finally figured out how to navigate this terrain piece. So let's get my... Say so Heron Calf back up closer to my army. And they can probably start resting so that they can recover some fatigue. Because, guys, there's going to be a lot more of running down routing soldiers, I'll tell you that. Now the French army is getting a bit closer to me, so I wanted to shift my battle lines over so that they do meet me more in the center. And if that's going to be the case, then let's get my Say so Calf on this side, just kind of up in the safety of my lines. And then let's get this unit of Saharan Cav closer to this flank so that we can start charging in. Now, it looks like, yeah, it looks like the uh, attack's going to be coming in here. What do we got? Spearmen, mil militia sergeants. Archers are going off to the flank, which is p perfect. It's like you guys, it's like you guys want to get run down by Light Cav. I mean, come on. All right, so Emma have Urban Militia. Let's go in here and fight these basic spearmen. And let's get a downhill char... Uh, no, not, I don't want a darn hill charge. I want to keep my Nubian Spearman here, I guess. On this side, though, let's bring these swordsmen over as well. And then you can kind of cover the gap. And then Hoblars, yeah, if you, guys, if you guys want to go for my Spearman, that's totally fine with me. I can bring in my... Let's see, okay, okay. Don't want to get caught by Spearman. No, 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 no. Don't get caught by Spearman. Guys, guys, march faster. March faster. And we should win the yeah, they're all losing they're losing badly. Now let's get my Saharan Cav to start chasing here. These Saharan Cav need to get away from these spearmen. Stop getting caught by spearmen. And let's see, what about what's happening on this side? Yeah, hobblers are just getting melted by archers. Let's make sure that they don't get a charge on my archers. Here and here. Let's send my spears down, I guess. Uh, maybe not. I can keep them. I can keep them there. And then, yeah, the French general is now fleeing. And let's see. I want to keep my horses away. Ooh, these are spearmen. No, 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 no. Don't attack spearmen. No, 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 no. Get away. Get away. Get away. Get away. Guys, guys, get away. And yeah, their general's running away, and I would love to kill him if I could. Let's chase down these archers, and we already have some more reinforcements coming on. So I, I need to be a little cautious with this. Let's get my swordsmen killing their feudal sergeants here and then here. And yeah, there's these annoying spearmen that are kind of chasing down 
my light cav. Let's get my Saharan cav on this side, chasing down archers. Let's see, you chase down this unit of archers, and then you chase down this unit of archers. And these swordsmen should kill their feudal sergeants. Well, let's send my Nubian spearmen down in a downhill charge just to make sure we get this cleaned up. And let's see, my archers are massacring their urban militia here. And then let's see, militia sergeants are running away. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is all, yeah, this is all gonna die. All these Frenchmen here are gonna die. I need to get my guys back though before these hobblers come up though. I need to get as many kills here as I can before those reinforcements come on. And just look at that kill ratio. That's feeling pretty gosh darn good. Looks like I will be able to get, hopefully I should be able to get my Saharan Cav back up to the safety of my lines before these uh, hobblers come in. They're getting pretty close though, so maybe bring my general down because he is in a unit of heavy cav. Guys, you need to stop, stop marching and start charging. Because yeah, you're gonna get caught. You will get caught. Now let's get my lines fixed up here on my right side. And yeah, let's get ready for a wave two. Hobbler's getting shot on this side. I feel like just kind of charging, charging them with my swordsmen and my Saharan Cav. Even though my Saharan Cav are tired, my swordsmen will be able to come in. There's only 31 hobblers left, so I should be able to clean them up. And these hobblers want to run away as well. That's totally fine. I'm going to bring in some spearmen and some port. Mop them up. And then what's next? I mean, what do we have next? Some urban militia and some peasants are going to be the next ones in. Yeah, bring it, guys. We're now staring down a just terrifying, terrifying French push on my left flank. I mean, what do we got? Peasants? Peasants and urban militia? Oh, God, I'm just shaking in my bootstraps right now. I don't know what I'm going to do about this. You know what? I think I think, um, I think I might need to send in some reinforcements, honestly. I'm going to need my allies to help me. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't have any allies. I just need to do this all myself. That's going to be fine. I think my Saharan Cav, I mean, they should probably be able to break these peasants. Even though my Saharan Cav are fairly damaged here. Just a cheeky little charge from my swordsman, Saharan Cav. They should all break. And then, yeah, peasants as well. They're getting shot by my archers. Still got some ammunition left as well. So I'm going to let my archers, yeah, yeah, waste their ammo on peasants. But you know what? That's fine because I do have more archers in, in uh, reserve. So I can bring them on as well to get some work done. And that's going to be it for those two units of peasants or urban militia. This unit of peasants, I'm not quite going to be able to get into them. So let's retreat with my Saharan Cav. Let's retreat with my swordsmen just so that we can get back to safety before these feudal sergeants come in. Because this is a tier 2 spearman unit, so I don't want to mess around with them. And I also don't want to get overexposed. Ooh, they do have Royal Knights. Oh, I did. I kind of missed that. Okay. A 19-man unit of Royal Knights. That's actually... That's actually kind of capable, but you know what? Since I have an opportunity to kill a unit of Royal Knights that's basically, I mean, in a way, kind of out on its own, that feels pretty good. This is going to be a good time to see what a downhill charge from my swordsman into these Tier 2 Feudal Sergeants, or Tier 2 Spearmen, can do here. And yeah, let's see. My guys are... They are quite tired, but they're still doing well. Okay, it says the Feudal Sergeants are winning. Okay, let's bring in some backup. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> turns out the... Turns out the fatigue that my men are facing is enough to make them a little bit... Um, a little bit on the shaky side. Yeah, it says they are steady. Steady is good. Let's try to break the morale of these guys. It's starting to rain here, so my archers are going to be a little less effective. But yeah, peasants are coming in. But now with a rear charge from my Saharan Cav into the rear of the Spearmen, hopefully we should break them soon because I don't want to leave my Saharan Cav. There we go. Now they're broken. That's perfect. And now we got mounted sergeants coming in along with that unit of Royal Knights. So let's get my guys up here fast enough. Let's try to get back here. Yeah, mounted sergeants, like I was saying, pretty decent. You know, high charge, light cap, medium light cav unit and then some Royal Knights of their own. So let's put, bring my general down to help out. I think that my left flank can still handle this little group by themselves. I probably don't need to bring, ooh, another unit of Hobbies. Okay, if that's the case, 
I mean, Spearman would be better, but I don't really want to bring Spearman all the way over from my right flank. So let's just go with what I have here in the center, which is easier to easier to obtain. So get you guys moving forward here. Get my swordsmen moving up as well. I'm going to have my archers retreat now because they are out of ammunition. I may as well bring in some more archers. And let's see, Royal Knights. I want to kind of shadow the Royal Knights with my own Gulam bodyguards. And I don't really want them to charge into my swordsmen. That's not going to be the ideal place to take a charge. Let's try to spread my spearmen out a little bit more here. And then same with these spearmen as well. Let's try to spread you guys out a little bit more so that my swordsmen don't take a charge. And let's see, how are we doing here? Yeah, these archers are shooting at these mounted sergeants, which feels good. Getting rid of them can help out. Oh, come on, guys. Don't run away. No, come back. Come back. Um, hmm. Gosh, it's tempting. Oh, dear. Are they retreating as well? Oh, gosh, it's really tempting. Can I, can I withhold the temptation? I don't think I can. I want to chase. I know this is what happens when, uh, this is like, this is like how many, many armies have perished is they can't withhold themselves they can't stop themselves from the temptation of chasing a fleeing army and you know what i am i am but human i also cannot help myself <laughs> i just i really want this to be decisive you know i really do and this looks like an army that's running away the fact that they all just turned around and they started running away like that looks pretty definitive to me so let's get in here and try to get as many kills as I can. Yeah, unfortunately, this won't be as definitive as I wanted it to be. But you know what? I'm still getting a lot of good kills here. I was not able to kill that Royal Knight unit or those Mounted Sergeants at the very end there. But still, you know, killing a lot of archers does matter. And I think I will simply just ransom these soldiers back to the French. Because, well, for one thing, I could use the money. Secondly, giving the enemy back units that they have to pay upkeep on and they're non-upgraded it's it doesn't seem like a bad idea honestly Ooh, ooh more guys are coming in okay interesting <laughs> does that mean i need to run away i, I don't know <laughs> um maybe back up a little bit <laughs> gosh yeah i guess i guess the battle's not over until the narrator man says yeah, look, yeah, it's over. They're done. So let's go back to chasing. And that's going to do it. All right. And man, look at that. So the battles in this in uh, medieval really do take a long time. 115 minutes for a defensive battle. Obviously, this was a much, much shorter battle than that. But you see how long I played? I mean, I played for probably 20 minutes and even sped up the time a little bit. And that's less than a quarter of this battle. <laughs> they're just, they're huge. They're epic, huge battles in this game. They really, really are. So, I did kill 550, and I did capture 641. Like I was saying before, I think I'm just going to leave them, I'm going to let them go. Because these, here's the thing. By having these units that are damaged, and they have to pay upkeep on them, and by doing that, you're kind of making it, you're kind of hamstringing their, their economy a little bit to where... If I were to kill all these units, these really, really bad units, for example, then the French would be free and open to just train up a whole new army of, you know, higher tier units. And right now I'm in a position where I can't really focus on my military infrastructure right now because I'm not able to trade in with anyone. So I would rather just kind of hamstring the French economy if I could and make it so that they don't really get better soldiers. So I'm going to leave it like that. Looks like I did lose another ship in the freaking English Channel, God damn it! But I did kill the French ship in the Bay of Biscay. And the ransom is refused, my god. So yeah, they didn't pay for those men, those cold-hearted bastards. So I did kill those 400, those 641, including the two nobles, Lord de Bourbon and Robert Sorel. So the boyar is complete in Algeria, so now I can train my Nubian spearmen and my desert archers here in Algeria, which feels pretty good. Let's see, the... Egyptians still don't want to cease fire. That sucks. Prince Mohammed, what do you, what do you got, man? He, he, avarice. So his various dubious enterprises to make money at the expense of his subordinates have been exposed. Plus two acumen, minus 40 happy, happiness. I want to say, isn't Prince Mohammed, isn't he my, 
my eldest heir? I can't remember. Yeah, nothing else. Okay. So, man, the, there's still a, just a crap ton of French armies here in Aquitaine, right? But these armies in Toulouse have, Toulouse have been decimated. Really, really decimated. Ooh, and what is this? What do we have here? What is this? Is this a... What kind of rebellion is this? It's, it should tell me. Rebel army, the Tyrolians. Okay, so it's just a... A rebel... So is there a civil war happening in the German Empire right now? See, this is why I want agents, you know, just saturating this entire area. I want to know what's happening. Interesting. This this is huge. I mean, this looks like a faction emergence, honestly, but it's... Yeah, what is this? Why is it so big? It's obviously not a faction emergence, because otherwise it would... This has to be a civil war. This wouldn't be just a normal, you know, outbreak of hostilities. This is... Yeah, because the Teutonic Knights is a German crusade unit, and so this is an army that did belong to the Germans, and then it, it's, it's going rebel. Yeah, this has to be a civil war, right? Teutonic sergeants, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So it looks like by having that crusade fail, they are dealing with their own population loyalty issues. Ha! <laughs> that feels so good! So, so good. Emissary, you go and talk to the... German king and see if I can get a ceasefire with him. And then, yeah, French. Um, same thing, I suppose. Well, I don't have any extra emissaries, I guess. Because I do want to keep talking to the Italian doge and the Egyptian dude and the Turkish sultan as well and try to get things back on track for me. Let's see how my how's my economy doing. Yeah, 1900. That's that's okay. That's actually livable. That's very that's very very livable. That feels okay, and I just have this one French boat here in the English Channel that I do need to get rid of. And, oh yeah, here as well, in the Irish Sea. But, you know what? That's all going to have to wait until next time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been a crazy one, and looks like there's going to be some more, more action coming on into the future here. But, you know what? In the meantime, I've been Conicep, and this has been Medieval Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>